Hey guys, welcome to this week's show of Healthy Dog Eats. I'm Kim Pachati and Dr. Oz. And I guess, and you know, I was thinking about this just a few minutes ago. You guys don't get to see it, but he gets so excited to do this show. It's like I put the chef coat on, he knows what it's supposed to be. He comes running into his spot, but he's got the thing where he doesn't kind of want to cross over um, with when Christine has the lights plugged in. So we have to wait and it's a whole routine, but it's so, you know, he just kind of lays her like a, a bump on a log during the show, but he really, really enjoys this. He knows that this is his place and what he's supposed to do. So I just wanted to share that with you. Like I'll lay down, go boy. This week, we are going to make dessert. Thanksgiving's next week. Um, so next week we'll do the turkey. Uh, well, no, it's like a week from Thursday. This is Tuesday. So we're gonna do our turkey next week before we get to dessert. And I always want to do something for dessert that's a little bit lighter, uh, something that's kind of, you know, because we have, we're also full. We have so much. And, you know, obviously we have our traditional pumpkin pie and we have our traditional, you know, pecan pie that people do or sweet potato pie, apple pies. When I had the bakery, I mean, like, I literally would have to start doing the apple praline pies, you know, at the beginning of October. One good thing about the recipe we did was you had to freeze it. So it worked out really well. But everybody goes to the traditional stuff. So I thought we would make a healthy pumpkin roll today. So we're gonna do, we're gonna make some pumpkin ice cream. We're gonna fill it with that. I don't know if you remember, I'm, I remember going out, my parents used to always get this thing. It was like a chocolate cake with vanilla ice cream and it looked like a jelly roll. And I used to love it being a kid. So this is kind of on that same kind of a version. Uh, we're gonna make a pumpkin sponge cake and then we're gonna fill it with our pumpkin ice cream. And I found something pumpkin that Cosmos would eat this. Uh, and it doesn't have cheese in it. So that worked out really well. We tried a pumpkin fudge this week um, and he liked that and he also liked our pumpkin ice cream. So we're gonna get going with that. So I wanted to show you a little bit first of how the ice cream's gonna be done because then this way you can go ahead and get this prepped and started uh, before you go through your whole recipe. And basically what we did was we took three bananas and they're about the size of this and I kept this on purpose to show you this was about the color that we looked for you don't want to do green bananas you want to do ones that are a little bit brown not too too ripe uh, but kind of like on this version for their sweetness level then we took a cup of pumpkin puree not the pumpkin pie filling and we stuck in there a half a teaspoon of cinnamon a quarter cup of maple syrup no excuse me three tablespoons of maple syrup and then we put in, I put in maybe half a teaspoon of vanilla. I put it in a Ziploc bag and we froze it. So you can see it's hard. We're gonna kind of crack it through like this when we go through, when we make the ice cream. And I wanted you to kind of get a heads up on that so you can kind of put that in. Usually it takes a couple hours for it to go through. That's gonna be for that. Uh, our next step is going to be, we're going to need a jelly roll pan. Now for our oven, I have a 13 by 10 pan. Uh, you can do, or I think it's 13 by 10, yeah, 13 by 10. You can do a 15 by 10 pan, spread it out. You can do it, you know, a 13 by 10, whatever fits in your oven the best way. And you're gonna take a piece of parchment paper, lay that on, and then we're gonna prep that pan by just spraying the parchment paper. Very simple. So we're gonna leave that pan to go. Our next step is we're going to take three eggs, and we want to make sure that the ingredients that we're using for our sponge cake is room temperature. So they'll fluff up more, we'll get more volume out of it, which will help because we're relying on a lot of the eggs to do, bringing this volume up. We're gonna mix it with our maple syrup and we're gonna get this going in the mixer. Um, this week I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the rescues. I'm a big advocate for people helping the dogs and I think that that's great and so forth. But I wanted you to understand, especially now with Christmas coming, there's a lot of research that you yourself have to do. It's very, very easy to walk into some of the, you know, like the pet stores and so forth, and you see they've got the dogs out there and to fall on that emotion. If you find yourself doing that, please stop and err on the side of caution first. Because especially if you have a dog, um, you, you're bringing another dog into that family that you have and you wanna make sure that it's the best match. We do that with puppies for families, and it really, really, you need to make sure that you do that with your own dog that you presently have and another bringing in a rescue dog. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, I'm gonna put in, like I said, that quarter of a cup um, of maple syrup into here, into three eggs. Make sure that you get it kind of all out of there. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna let this beat up 
until it gets real pale and yellow. So we're gonna let it go for a little bit. We're not gonna make you listen to it all and we'll be right back with it. All right, guys, I wanna show you what I mean as far as, like I said, pale yellow. So you can see that that's what the three eggs along with the quarter cup of maple syrup kind of gets that way. So now what we are going to do is we're gonna take two thirds cup of pumpkin. We just have straight pumpkin with this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of like take little pieces and kind of drop it in because we don't wanna deflate our eggs kind of going through there. All the way in. And we're just gonna, once again, kind of fold over and get that all going and all mixed in. So we have a pumpkin batter. And you can actually do this. You can do this with chocolate. You can take cocoa and put this in there. Um, I would put a little bit of the non-fat dry milk with the cocoa if you would do something like that, though, just to kind of give that a little bit more of a stabilization. Since we're doing that, we're just gonna fold this in, as you can see, getting our pumpkin all nice and blended. And this is great because this cake is actually gluten-free. You see, we're not using any butter. We're not using any sugar. Um, we're super low on our maple syrup. We only, like I said, used a quarter of a cup into that. The whole recipe with the ice cream included has only got you know three tablespoons and then that quarter of a cup. Uh, so it's very, very good for people that you know with diabetes and so forth um, is that we're not going to spike their their sugar. We do have the bananas. We're going to use the the sweetness of that to be able to get that blended up in there as well. Uh, so what we have is we have three quarters of a cup of rice flour. Now you can use almond flour as well. The both of those flours we can use as gluten free. We have half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. We did half a teaspoon of arrowroot. Remember, we always put arrowroot in if we're using something that's gluten-free. It just helps level off the system. And we also have a half a teaspoon of salt, uh, the sea salt, the kind that is you know, safe for the dogs. And the reason that we have to use salt in baking is it levels, basically it's all kind of the science, it levels it all off. And once again, make sure that you are measuring your flour properly. So we're just gonna put those in there. We're gonna whisk all that together very easily. And then we're going to take our flour and we're just going to put fold our flour into our egg mixture. You see, this is super, super easy. A lot of people, oops, so much for that, right, cause You'll get it. Um, a lot of people get uh, a little bit nervous when they have to start doing the eggs and folding stuff and making cakes. That's why they always go grab the box cakes. Sometimes those are a lot easier to do. But this is such a super, super easy cake to make and very easy. And you can actually... If you don't want to fill it with, with ice cream like we're doing today, you can make something with a cream cheese or yogurt. Uh, but for us, we wanted, once again, to have that special treat for the dogs uh, that, that was safe for them and something that they we knew that was good for them as well, which pumpkin is great because it helps with a lot of different things for the dogs as far as um, digestion. You can even take pumpkin seeds and roast them and then kind of ground that up and it adds extra protein to your dog's food. It helps naturally with worms and parasites and all that kind of stuff. So if you have a, a dog that you kind of like is outside, maybe you're on a farm or outside a lot that you're constantly worried about those kinds of things, throw a little bit of pumpkin seeds. It helps regulate them, helps keeps it you know going real well. So we are back to our jelly roll pan that we had sprayed, like we said, make sure that kind of stays on there. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna pour our batter out very easy. We've already preheated our oven to 375. And this is going to take anywhere between 11 and 15 minutes to bake up. Uh, you just want it, you know, just like a regular cake, you touch it to the center, you know, make sure that you're, you know, you're good there. And it doesn't take very long at all. But what we do need to make sure is that we roll this when we get it out of the oven. And we're going to show you how to do it. So preparation for the next step after this is you're going to need a kitchen towel. Make sure it's clean. If you can do, you know, one of those white lint-free towels, that's actually even the best kind to be able to use. But we're, as you can see, we're just spreading this all out. We don't want to go, you know, up and over. We want to kind of keep it all as, keep it as level as you possibly can because we don't want the cake to crack. I'm just all I'm doing is smoothing it out, making sure that we're pretty even all the way around. And that's it. Easy peasy. We're going to pop this right in the oven. And 
And then this is like the kitchen towel that I'm asking you to get. We'll need this when we get it out. And we're gonna use this, we're gonna put a little bit of flour on it, and we're gonna be able to flip our cake right when we cut it out, and we'll show you how that we do that. But a couple quick things back to what we were talking about as far as the, the dogs and the rescues. And like I said, this time of year with Christmas, you know, don't just go grab somebody a dog and bring them home and surprise it. That's the worst thing you can possibly do, not only for the person, but a lot of for the dog. You have to look at everything from a dog's perspective. And we're kind of a little bit of experts on that considering we just released our book called The Puppy's Perspective that we share with you everything, not everything, but 101 tips um, that we've learned over the past five years of how puppies learn and really kind of goes into dogs uh, just as well because it's all, all kind of common denominator. But going back to, you know, as we're, like I said, we're talking about the rough stage and looking at that from the dog's perspective coming in, look at the breed that you're getting. Uh, is it the right for your family? Look at if you have already a male, do you get a female? That's actually the best combination, a male-female. Um, then they say male males, and then they say female female. And it's just a, once again, it's back to the personality. Do you get a puppy? Do you get an older dog? You know, there's a lot of different things and a lot of different factors to consider. And we need to be responsible because we don't want things to go wrong and to go avail. And sometimes they do and, and, and stuff kind of like happens, but we have to be responsible. We have to check into what it is that we're doing. So we're gonna let our cake cook right now. When we come back, we're gonna roll it all up for you, let it cool, while we let it cool, we'll make our ice cream, and we'll see what else is going on. We still have Rocky this week. We have to tell you a little story that happened with Mr. Rocky too when we get back. I'll show you a little bit how the easiest way to do this. Um, so as I said, we have our white dish towel, linen towel, and I'm just gonna take a little bit of the flour and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on. And like I said, you can use almond flour, you can use rice flour, you can use all-purpose flour, the gluten factor doesn't matter to you. And then, and then we are just going to take our cake right out of the oven. And what we're gonna do is we're literally just going to flip it right over. That, that way, flip it right over. Without cracking it, Kim. There you go. All right, so you can see how easy that comes off cracked our little edge here, but we'll get it put back together. So you can see it's steaming. Now the, the key to this is we have to roll this up while it is warm like this, because if we don't roll this, we're just taking our towel and we're gonna roll it right up just like this. If we don't do this now, when we get to do it later, it's gonna crack. So this is actually how you're gonna cool your cake. So your roll is gonna sit just like that. So you know you need it to sit for probably about 20 to 30 minutes. So we're gonna let it do that. And then when we come back, we'll make the ice cream, we'll put it all out and we'll clean it all up. We're gonna start our ice cream, which is super, super simple. As I said, we have our three bananas. So all we're gonna do is dump this right in our food processor. This is very, I mean, it's the exact same recipe we did in the summertime when we made the watermelon ice cream. Um, we just used watermelon instead of the pumpkin. And then we're gonna take our pumpkin and we're gonna kind of just break it up in pieces. Like I said, it's easier to do the sweetening of the pumpkin itself before you freeze it as opposed to doing it now because you don't want to add all that liquid into this. You want to still keep it frozen so it stays, you know, nice and ice cream wise without an ice cream machine. I think it's really cool how you can be able to do this. All right, easy enough. We're going to put it on our lid. We are going to blend this up and then we're going to unroll it and we'll get going with our pumpkin roll. Welcome back, and we've got our ice cream all done. We, like I said, we didn't kind of, we didn't show you kind of with all the sound because we didn't want to spray you with it. Um, when you do it, let your pumpkin and banana just soften just a little bit. Does it, if they've been in like the freezer, you know, for a good couple hours and they're super super hard, give them a little bit because it does take the food processor uh, probably a good seven eight minutes. To finally kind of come through you have to stop stir it stop stir it you may want to be tempted to add milk or something don't just kind of just let it go and it will definitely come through so you see we got very very soft um, consistency and that's basically what we need in order to be able to put it uh, on our pumpkin roll. so right now we are going to unroll our roll and you see exactly how it is 
And you have to do this, like I said, when it's warm, because if you don't, what happens is it ends up cracking. So we're going to take it just like this. Now we're not going to use the towel the second time when we do it. I did get a little crack there, but I think that's from when I flipped it. So I'm going to take this, and I want to make sure when I do this, I don't go real close to the edge. Because if I, what's going to happen as I roll it, I want to keep leave a little space here and a little space on that side and this side. Because as I roll it, it's going to start to push the ice cream out. And it's not a big deal if it does. If you get a little too close, you just kind of have to, it's a little bit more messier. You just have to kind of clean it up. And, this, and you probably, you know, don't worry about, oh, Cosmos is out there. We didn't bring him back in. We had him watching Rocky, which I have to tell you the story about Rocky. I can hear the two of them out there right now. Rocky ended up, um, the other day, we had to rush him to the vet, to the emergency, because he decided he was going to eat a bug. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a spider, I'm not sure if it was one of those woolly bears, but all of a sudden he broke out in hives, his face got all puffed up, and we're like, oh no. So threw him in the car first, gave him a better drill. Because the reason I'm sharing this is because I don't want this, if this ever happens to you with your dog, I don't want you to overreact. It's all okay. The key is you just have to get him to the vet as quickly as you possibly can. Um, for us, it was on five o'clock on a Sunday, so we know we had to go to the emergency vet, which is you know a good 40 minutes away. Um, so, but give them a Benadryl, one Benadryl. I believe it's 25 milligrams for every 20 pounds. I'm not sure on the dosage. I'll have to, I'll look it up and I'll have it on our information. Um, I have it written down. So give them a Benadryl, put them in the car, take them to the vet. The vet will give them another shot of Benadryl, another shot of steroids. You just want to make sure that you do that. Don't think, oh, my Benadryl will work because sometimes their reaction could be as Rocky's was. It was worse than, say, when it, we've had this happen before with a bee sting or something like that with a puppy. So just make sure that you do that. But Rocky's, I felt so bad for him. His poor face swelled up like you wouldn't believe. But he's all good now, ready to go. And he actually loves the pumpkin. So we're going to put this in here like this. We're going to get it in our edge of it. And you're going to see just how easy this is. And we'll probably have a little bit left over. Um, like I said, we ended up actually using a whole can of pumpkin for the recipe because we used part in our cake and then we used the other part in our ice cream. So we're going to get this down and then we're just simply going to roll up our cake. And you can see it's already starting to come that way, which is okay. It's going to come out of our edges a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll just scrape that off so we don't get it all goopy everywhere. I even put a little too much in, even after telling you about it. We're gonna roll it back down. All right, now, next step, is we're just gonna put it in plastic wrap, and we're gonna let it sit in the freezer oh, for maybe about an hour or two, depending upon how, you know, how much you want it, if you want it super, super hard. If you can do this up a day ahead of time, you can do this up two days ahead of time, whatever it is that you want to do, what's nice is it's done. You don't have to use the oven for it. And that's one thing, you know, we all know at Thanksgiving, we're always constantly fighting for oven space, uh, especially when it's time to get the turkey in and everything has to get heated up. So this works really, really great. So we are going to put this in the freezer, let it go for a little bit. We're going to get our sliced up, ready to go and get the boys in here and we'll be right back. Welcome back guys, Rocky is just like, give me to this pumpkin roll. <laughs> He's ready for it. So as you saw, we filled it all up, we decorated it up, uh, we put a little bit of hot fudge chocolate on for us, because we're having a little bit of a splurge for the holiday, but obviously for the pups, um, we just gave them a little bit of whipped cream on top. That's their splurge, right? And Rocky is, he is, I can feel him shaking, he is just like, can't wait to get to this. But you can get the recipe at empoweredpups.com. We look forward to seeing you next week. Next week, we are making a turkey. Uh, just a little turkey. A turkey we love. Look at you. He's so excited. As you can see, he's all back better. He's probably just a little bit nervous, right? Are you ready? Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. Okay, okay. We're going to have some. Some for you. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. Let me Cosmos here. Let me get Cosmos. There's Cosmos. And there's Rocky.